Hello and welcome to my YouTube live broadcasting. God bless everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Today we're going to prove to you that Muhammad is nothing but a bisexual, pervert, prophet, fake prophet of Islam. We have enough proof that Muhammad was nothing but a bisexual. And we will show this to everybody. I hope there are Muslims who are listening or watching and I hope by the end of our teaching today you will leave Islam because you know when we ask Muslims Muslims who is the best example in mankind they will say Muhammad well if Muhammad is the best example and we can prove to you that Muhammad is nothing but a bisexual prophet that means you have to denounce Muhammad because Muhammad himself was nothing but a bisexual. And since Islam is heavily against, heavily against being a gay or being a bisexual, that means you have to denounce Muhammad. I hope we will not scare a lot of Muslims today, you know, because Muslims don't like to talk about these hidden secrets about the Prophet's life, right? They don't like to mention these topics. The Imams don't like to mention these topics. It's a big secret. It's haram to criticize the sexual, sorry, the bisexual prophet of Islam. Let us start, guys. If we go to Sunan Abi Dawood, if we go here, the Aisha, Umm al Mu'minin, the mother of the believers, saying, The Prophet used to kiss her and suck her tongue when he was fasting. Isn't it haram to have sexual activities as a male during the fasting, during Ramadan in this case? Why is it so important to mention this in Islam? This is Sunnah, right? This is the tradition and teaching of the Prophet of Islam. So Muslims have to accept this. And why is it always about sex? Sex, sex, sex. If we go to a different hadith, <clears throat> we can read, again from Sunan Abi Dawood, Aisha reporting, the Apostle of Allah is saying one or two sucks. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Does why is this mentioned? And this is Sahih. Sahih, Sahih. And if we go to another hadith from Sahih, Muslim Sahih. There came to us the proclaimer of Allah's Messenger and said, Allah's Messenger has granted you permission, i.e. to contract temporary marriage with women. Give my women money, have them, have nice sexual intercourse pleasure with them, give them money and leave. You know, I think this is why last time they said there's nothing holy in Islam. You remember the Shaykh saying there is no nothing holy in Islam. Well, the proof is in front of you. Muslim, hadith number 1405a, right? Another hadith, again, Sahih Muslim, Sahih, 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 1406a, Allah's Messenger Muhammad permitted muta prostitution for us, for who? His Sahaba. I and, so I and another person went out and saw a woman of Bana Amir who was like a young log Next, she so we presented ourselves to her for contracting muta sexual intercourse for a temporary time prostitution. Whereupon she said, What dowry would you give me? What money would you give me? I said, My cloak. So he gave her her cloak. A prophet of God allowing prostitution? What? From Sahih Muslim again. Hadith number 1249. While I was in the company of Jabir, a person came and said, There is difference of opinion among Ibn Abbas and Ibn Zubair about two mutas. You had two mutas, guys, two benefit pleasures. Prostitution. Tamattu'al in Hajj and temporary prostitution, muta, with women. Right? So, not whereupon Jabir said, we have been doing this during the lifetime of Allah's Messenger. So the companions did it, Muhammad did it, 
And but who forbade it? Not Muhammad in the end, before his death. No, it was Omar. And then Omar forbade us to do so. And he, we never resorted to them. Last time I checked, Omar was not a prophet. So who gave Omar the authority to abrogate chapter 4, ayah 24 of the Quran? The ayah of Muta. Guys, this is why Shia do, still practice Muta prostitution because they reject Omar, remember? They curse Omar. Al Adab al Mufrad al Bukhari, number 1183. It is related that Abu Huraira said, one of the companions of Muhammad, who gave us a lot of hadith, where is the little one? So Muhammad is saying, where is the little one? Hassan came running. The so Hassan, guys, is the son of Ali. Came running and jumped into his lap. Whose lap? Muhammad's lap. Then he put his hand in his beard. So then the Prophet, may Allah pray on him. <laughs> it's praying. It has nothing to do with it. Anyway, opened his mouth. What? So Muhammad opened the mouth of the little one, of the little boy, and put his thumb in his mouth. This is disturbing. I mean, I mean, if I would have done it live now, if I open my cam and I would have done it to my nephew, what would have you thought of me? Then he said, Oh Allah. So Muhammad is saying, Oh Allah, I love him so love. You know, I love this little one. And I love the one who loves him. If we continue, Musnad Ahmed. 16,245. Muawiyah said, I saw the Prophet sucking on the tongue or the lips of Al Hassan, son of Ali. May the prayers of Allah, hey, finally, prayers of Allah be upon him. For no tongue or lips that the Prophet sucked on will be tormented by hellfire. But wait, guys, we found a contradiction. How can Muhammad promise Jannah to anyone if Allah himself said in the Quran, say, this is chapter 46, ayah 9, I am no bringer of new fangled doctrine among the messengers. This is a lie because Muhammad contradicted the prophets before him. Nor do I know what will be done with me or with you. So according to this ayah, Muhammad doesn't know what Allah will do to him. There's a big chance that Allah will put him in hellfire. So how in the world does Muhammad guarantee the Islamic brothel called Jannah of Allah to his followers if he sucks on their tongue or lips? If we go to other sources in Islam. You mentioned the first one, right? How Muhammad sucked on the tongue and lips. But here's another one. Majma al Zawaid al Ibn Abu Bakr al Haythami. This is a source, Islamic, so highly respected, saying, I saw the Messenger of Allah, Allah prayers be upon him, Allah is still praying, putting Hussein's legs apart and peep, his little peep. We here we have a small boy who is again, he's the, the second son of Ali guys. Muslims don't know about this stuff. A lot of people never heard that Muhammad did all this kind of nasty behavior. That happens when you are a victim of an Arabic cult. Those people don't know Arabic. They don't speak Arabic. So if we conclude, guys, if we do a nice conclusion, a taking saliva from the little boys or giving them saliva, right? When he was kissing them and putting his tongue. That's what, what Muhammad did. He tried to calm them down, satisfying them until evening, sharing a miraculous sweetness and sharing their salvation as if Muhammad knew what Allah would have done to him right how how can he ensure their salvation well he does not know what Allah would do to him nor do I know what will be done with me 
Muhammad is saying. If you go to a hadith, nice, nice hadith, Sunan Abi Dawud, Abdul Rahman ibn Abu Layla, quoting Usaid ibn Hudayr, a man of the Ansar, said that while he was giving to jesting and was talking to the people and making them laugh, the Prophet poked him under the ribs with a stick. So he said, let me take a re retaliation. He said, you are wearing a shirt, but I'm not. The Prophet, Allah praying on him, then raised his shirt so, and the man embraced him and began to kiss his side. Then he said, this is what I wanted, O oh, Messenger of Allah. Oh, this is not Daif, this is Sahih and Chain, Albani. Hadith number from Sunan Abi Dawud, Hadith number 5224. So let us continue guys. Now we are going to prove to you that Muhammad actually engaged in more sexual activities with men. We know that Muhammad had a lot of wives and women, but did he ever had a man? Before going further, let's see the harsh experiences Muhammad had while he was still an orphan kid. Read with me. I made him take off his clothes and sleep with me. Who's talking here? Let us see who's talking here. In regards to Surah al duha chapter 93, 6, Imam Fakhruddin al-Razi, another very highly respected Imam. After the death of Abdullah, the father of Muhammad, sorry, while the mother of the Prophet is still pregnant with him, and then he was born, he was with his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib. So Muhammad was with his grandfather and his mother Amina. Amina died while he was two years. So, and grandfather also died while he was eight years. And before his death, Abdul Muttalib asked Abu Talib, his uncle, to take care of the Prophet since he was Abdullah's brother from the same mother. So Abu Abba Talib was now taking care of Muhammad because he, both his parents died. It has been told that Abu Talib one day said to his brother Al-Abbas, Abu Talib, do you want to hear about Muhammad what I saw from him? Al-Abbas said, yes, please tell. Abu Talib, he was in my custody so and not leaving him out of my sight day and night. And do not entrust him to anyone until I make him sleep in my bed. What? And then Abu Talib continues, one night I ordered him his uncle ordering Muhammad to take off his clothing and sleep with me. Oh Lord of mercy. So I saw resentment on his face and put and but hate to show disobedience. So, and he replied back, Oh uncle, put your face away until I take off my clothing, Muhammad is saying. As no one should see my naked body, Muhammad is saying. So I was puzzled from his response and did put my face away until he came into bed naked. And when he did, there was a dress between both of us that I not put. And then I found that he's too soft. So look, look the uncle of Muhammad saying. Then I, found, look, then I found that he's too soft and smells so good. As good as he's soaked in scent. So I kept trying hard to stare at his naked body. So a lot of times during our sleep at this night, I found him not in bed and I kept calling on him. So he said, uncle, here I am and returned. You know, ask yourself this question, guys. Muhammad is a young boy, young child, an orphan. He has no father or mother. He's staying naked in the bed of his uncle. Lord knows what his uncle was doing to him. Abu Talib did the following. He requested that Muhammad take off his clothes and come to bed. Trying too hard to stare at an eight-year-old naked boy, he managed to touch him during his sleep and describe his skin as being very soft and sweet. He was obviously enjoying the presence of a naked boy as he kept smelling, staring and touching him. This gives a sufficient indication of that perverted Bedouin 
pagan Quraysh tribe community. Right? Here's the reference in Arab. I gave you the link, so don't say I didn't give you the link. The link was provided to you. Not only that, guys, look what happened before Muhammad became a prophet. That's not the only. So you can also see the link here from an official Islamic website, islamweb.net. This is not, not a Christian website, guys. This is an official Islamic website, right? My cousin raped me. Yes, Muhammad was raped by his own cousin. Meanwhile, Muhammad's own uncle, Abu Talb, only touched him. We find that Muhammad claimed that he was raped by his own cousin, Abu Sufyan ibn Harith bin Abdul Muttalib. And before presenting the evidence, let us examine the Arabic expression used. Hataka Ardi. Hataka Ardi. Coming from Hatakal Ard. Let us see how to, it will be translated in a translation engine like Google Translate. Hatakal Ard. Rape. To go to the source, guys, to provide the evidence. Yes, exactly. Thank you. It means rape. Al-Sira al-Nabawiyya. Sira ibn Hisham. The most earliest source that Islam has. So read with me. Reported by Ibn Ishaq. It was that Abu Sufyan ibn Harith bin Abdul Muttalib and Abdul Allah bin Ubay, Umayya bin al-Mughira had met Prophet of Allah. Allah's prayers upon him at a place called Naik al okab between Mecca and Medina. So it's a place between Me Mecca and Medina. And so they wanted to enter his presence. So Um Salama talked to him about that saying, O Prophet of Allah, it is your cousin from your uncle and your other cousin from your aunt and your kinsman. So he, Muhammad, answered. Now watch guys, look what Muhammad saying. I have nothing to do with those two. Who? His cousins. In regards to my cousin, he raped me. Muhammad was abused, sexually abused, over and over by his own family. And and not only that, guys, it's a good chain. So. Muhammad being raped, guys, the story about Muhammad being raped has good isnad, good chain of narrator. So Muslims can say it's da'if, it's good. So Al-Haytami and Al-Albani, who are one of the most respected scholars in Islam, agreeing that it's the isnad of the chain of narration is good. So the expression Hadaq Ardi means rape me, right? And here are more three independent, different independent sources that mention the same. Ibn Ammi Fahatakardi. You see, it's all over the place. Again, from very respected sources. So Muslim can say this is da'if. Now, let us go to Muhammad's sexual adventures with the Sahaba in Sunan al-Kubra reported by Abu Ali al-Ruzbari from Abu Bakr bin Dashah then Abu Dawood then Abed Allah bin Mu'az then Abi then Qarma look how many people sorry for butchering the names anyway a man from Bani Fazaza from a woman called Bahisa about her father said my father Abu Bahisa took permission from the Prophet Allah praying on him and he entered between him and his shirt and began to kiss him and embrace him and then he said Abu Bahisa of O Prophet of Allah what's the thing that is forbidden to be forbidden Muhammad saying the war and so on and so on. Muhammad actually loved it and something is for sure weird happening in the last conversation the back and forth while Abu Bahisa is inside Muhammad's shirt if you know what I mean right See, again from an official Islamic website. Go read it. 